Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here this afternoon and it's been an incredible day so far and I know there's still more to come. Uh, really inspiring and to, to follow on from Kitty, um, another great uh, talk and I'm sure your heads are just full of ideas, buzzing around, uh, ideas, things to do, things to talk to people about. So I hope over uh, my talk, I'm hopefully going to have a few moments where I just want you to stop and think as well, um, but hopefully some practical ideas too. As was said earlier, we're facing the greatest challenge, but also the greatest opportunity. So I have, uh, as Saul has introduced, I work for Arosha UK. Who are Arosha UK? What do we do? We are a Christian conservation charity and our ethos is working for the protection and restoration of the natural world, both as a response to the biblical mandate to care for the earth and as a demonstration of the Christian hope for God's world. Arosha UK is part of a worldwide Arosha family. Uh, there are Arosha organizations around the world committed to conservation action. Arosha stands for the rock in Portuguese. Quite often people say, well, what does that mean? Where does that come from? So the very first Arosha project was a, a bird conservation project in Portugal, and that's where the name comes from. Arosha UK encompasses three main programs. One of those is called Wild Christian, which is a program for individuals or households to sign up to, to receive uh, monthly or, or regular email updates, information and support. Partners in Action is the conservation side or specific conservation side of our organization. One of the elements of work there is something called Partners in Action or a project where we're specifically partnering with Christian landowners. So that might be uh, someone who's got a small area of land or half an acre or a few acres to landowners who have thousands of acres, maybe as part of a conference center or just privately owned land. So the conservation team will look at how to manage, how to help that, that landowner manage their land for nature. We also have two conservation uh, nature reserves. One of those is just south of Bury St Edmunds called Fox Earth Meadows. That's the nearest one to you here. One of the other aspects of our conservation programme is something called Target 25, which I want to just make reference to because we heard from the Wildlife Trust about the wonderful range of animals and species and thinking about habitats that we can do something for. And I think Target 25 could be a really useful resource for churches because it's 25 species, groups of species and habitats that the conservation project have prioritized as species that are at risk in our country. And a church may want to adopt one, two or three of these groups as a kind of way of targeting what you might do for nature. Not to, not to neglect the others, but it might be a very relevant group of species or habitat for your setting. So do have a look at that resource on the Eco Church website. And then Eco Church, which is what I'm here to talk to you about. That's the, uh, the programme that is open to churches of all denominations across England and Wales. It's a learning community. Today isn't about judging where are you at or you're not doing this, but you're doing that. It's about learning together. And today is obviously an enormously good start in that process, but also a way of keeping you motivated and drawing from other people's experience. It's an award process, so there are gold, sorry, there are bronze, silver, and gold awards to gain. Since Eco Church was launched in 2016, we have now got 7,000 churches registered with us. Over 3,200 of those churches are awarded. So if you're sitting here with an award, you're in very good company. And if you haven't yet registered, join the party. But we want that to grow, we want that to be bigger. Our goal at the moment is for us to reach 25% of churches in England and Wales by 2025. So that would be 10,000 churches. So we are really encouraging you to be part of that. Engaging with Eco Church is a demonstration of action to protect nature and to address climate change. It's about standing together to, as a church to say 
I love God. I love what he has made. I love that he cares for me, and I want to care for his earth. It's a missional opportunity as well, as we have already heard this morning from Bishop Graham. I'd like you to make, take a moment now just to think, where is your church on that eco-church path? Are you at zero? Maybe you hadn't even heard of eco-church before today. Or are you at 10? Maybe you're nearly a gold eco-church and you're looking at the way ahead and you think, I should be standing up there instead of Polly telling you what to do. So where are you from naught to 10 as a, an eco-church? Just have a moment to think about that. Today is about reaching the next step. It's about, we're here, we need to get there. We're here, what can we do to get there? What's next? This is a picture from Southeast Nigeria. I lived here uh, for three years in this, just near here in a village. I was working for a mental health project. We were surrounded by villages where we lived and the, the people within the village were subsistence farmers. They grew enough food to feed their family, but they, most people also tried to supplement their income by growing cocoa. And each year they would pick the cocoa from the trees, they would dry it outside on these uh, racks, and then they would bag the cocoa into sacks and then stand at the side of the road with these huge sacks of cocoa, waiting for the buyers to come along the road to pay for the cocoa. In the time that I was there, every year those farmers got less and less money for their cocoa. And in the end, it was not worth even picking the cocoa to sell it because the money was so little. Instead, what many of the villagers started to do was to, to fell the trees in the forests around them because they could get far more money from logging the, the trees and, and selling those. So in the time that we were there, we saw these great scars across the, uh, the hillsides where forests had been cut down. The consequence of that was when the heavy rains came, the land started to just be washed away because there were no trees to retain the soil. And very often then the very farms of the people in the villages was also washed away. So then they were without food. Watching this happen was my aha moment. I made the connection between the choices we make of things we purchase, the price that we're willing to pay for a bar of chocolate, and the consequence for our brothers and sisters elsewhere in the world. I also saw firsthand the effects of deforestation and what that means for biodiversity, what that means for communities, and what that means for livelihoods. Global systems, temperature rise, nature depletion can feel like an enormous challenge. But collectively, Christians have a role to play. We are told, told in the Bible to love our neighbor. What we're talking about for all of today, whether that's nature, non-human, human, human uh, carbon emissions, that is how we love our neighbor. When I moved uh, to the UK after living in West Africa, I joined a church that was doing this thing called Eco Church. And it was fantastic for me to discover that here was a framework that Christians could use to take action, which has again been the theme of today. So, when was your aha moment? When was the moment, or when has been a moment, that you have made that connection between God, our creator, and what is around us? When have you felt compelled to take action? Just think for a moment. Maybe jot it down. If you wish to share with your neighbor, please do. But just have a moment. Part of developing eco-church in your setting, in your church, is to create a space for people to have aha moments amongst your congregation. 
Maybe you want to share your story with them after today. Throughout our faith, we are growing, we're coming to new realizations. That's part of being a Christian. Moving forward with Eco Church is also a process. There are going to be turning points as you go forward and for your congregation. So I really encourage you to think about how you will create those spaces in your church. I've had several conversations today with people who have said, it's really hard, it's just me. We just gotta keep motivated. And that's absolutely right. And you are gonna be energized after today. So you need to take that back and think how you can get your church energized. And sharing your story might be one of those ways. So let's get to Eco Church. This uh, lists the five categories of the Eco Church survey. It's an online survey. You go on, you register to the platform, and you can access it. It's a holistic toolkit. It's to be applied to your church and your setting. And it covers these five areas of your church life. Under each category, there are a series of questions and taking you through thematically those five areas. So I'm just going to outline what the five themes are. Worship and teaching to begin with. Worship and teaching is foundational. It's so great that we're actually having this conference in a church. We need to start by exploring together what the Bible tells us about creation. And it's not just the bit in Genesis. It is throughout the Bible. We need to develop our love of God and his creation. And action will follow. This category underpins the whole of the Eco Church program. We need to celebrate God's creation in our worship. That's collective worship, that's individual worship, and worship in small groups. A one-off service during the season of creation, which is September, or during springtime, is a really good place to start, an easy access into this theme. But you will also need to think about the, the teaching perhaps with your children or young people, or maybe things that are happening outdoors, outside, and also space for lamentation. We've heard today some statistics, some really, really overwhelming facts about what is happening. And we need to repent. We need to, to talk to God about that. We need to acknowledge the destruction that we are witnessing and we are part of. Small groups are also a really valuable way of going into these topics in more depth in your church. The next section is buildings. Uh, we're in an incredible building today, but church, church spaces can be challenging, as we've already heard. Uh, the building and land section are really critical in the way we look at the assets that we have and how we steward those. Uh, cutting carbon is obviously a big part of thinking about your building, and we've talked, touched on heating today. And churches have, have heritage, they have a place in the community but there are churches finding it incredibly creative solutions to some of the challenges. And we've again heard a little bit about that today, thinking about how your building is used throughout the week, not just maybe on one day a week or even a month that, that you have a congregation, but how is, how is it used and who is it used by and how might it be used in the future? We've heard about heating spaces, not people, heating pews, heating seats and cushions. Lots and lots of resources on the Church of England website and on the Diocese of Norwich website for you to look at. The section of land, again, we've had lots of great information about that. And that land of your church, it could be very small. It might even be a car park, but it's likely to be a bigger space, particularly in this wonderful part of the country that we're in. And wherever, whatever land you've had, think about managing that land for nature thinking about putting up bird boxes, creating habitats by leaving piles of leaves, not mowing sections of the, the grass. We've got some resources on our Eco Church website about how to create a land management plan so that can take you through some ideas of things to think about and some example plans for you to look at within your own setting. 
community and global engagement. This section is all about how we connect with other groups in our community and globally. How aware are you as a church of what's going on globally? How do you respond to climate justice? This is going to look very different in other churches, but many churches already have connections in other parts of the world, perhaps through the diocese connection uh, with, other, with other churches or other dioceses in the world. Maybe you're already supporting mission partners in other parts of the world. Maybe you're already involved in different charities who are looking at this subject. That comes into your, your concern about community and global engagement. Maybe there are other projects uh, initiatives or food banks or uh, lots of conservation projects or nature reserves that might be on your doorstep. Engaging with them is part of community and global engagement. And finally, lifestyle. Sometimes people say to me, um, well, we can't really do this bit because we can't tell our congregation how to live. I think that's something that somebody standing in this place does every Sunday, actually, is tell us how to live. They challenge us on how to live as Christians, and the lifestyle part is, is part of that. Encouraging our congregation to think about these different issues. To think about lifestyle tips, food and travel, ethical finance, recycling. That kind of information is things that we can share, we can talk about, we can ask one another about within a congregation. Using a questionnaire is a really good way of asking your, your community, what do you do? Tell us about what you do, so that you can then gather information, but also encourage one another, but also share what's going on locally. We have a big issue in our community where we, we, we like to recycle or my church, we like to recycle things that are hard to recycle. So we have a collection place for, for pens and we take that to a school who, who recycle them. But when we discover that a pharmacy can recycle blister packs, we tell everybody so that they can do it too. We don't have to do it, but they've got the opportunity to do it. So lifestyle is about sharing information together. So the eco-church process. If you haven't done it, I hope after today you feel ready to go online and register with the Eco Church process. It is free, you can sign up, you can look at it yourself and sign your church up. You can start a survey, you can update that survey at any time. And again, I really recommend that if you have not yet done it, it is a great way to start. See where you are. You may already be at bronze, you don't know. Or you may be in bronze in one of those categories we've just talked about, or maybe you're further along. And the, I will cut, yep, I, someone's just asked if have we redone the survey. I've got it later on, but let me answer that now. So the Eco Church survey is being uh, undergoing a major update right now. We've piloted it with a few churches. We are now in the process of just finalizing that and it will be launched in the summer. We're kind of in, supposedly in the summer now, it doesn't quite feel like it, but in the next few weeks we hope that the new survey will be launched. But if you have already started a survey, you will be able to access and go into that survey until the end of the year. So you've got six months to finish that survey. If you have not yet started a survey or if you're at bronze thinking of silver but you think you might not get there before the end of the year you'll probably want to just wait until you start a new survey until it comes out but that's where we're at and they'll run along in parallel together for six months or so and then it'll be just a new survey but that's a, a good question thank you um, so there is plenty of information there are loads of resources on our website and uh, that's that's addresses up there if you haven't yet got it Oh, which I've just moved on really quickly, so I'll just go back if, <laughs> if you haven't yet got it. Uh, the Eco Church survey is really easy to navigate once you get on there. This is a screenshot of what it looks like when you go on. You'll have a box uh, of different questions under each of the five categories. You open a box, it has a question, and you respond. Each time you respond to a question, uh, you'll get a number of points, and you'll see that little blue bar at the top move along as you get more points. So it'll get to bronze and silver and to gold, and you need to reach the relevant level in all five categories to get the award. So will it be easy or hard to achieve the <laughs> 
The question is, uh, will it be easier or harder to gain a, an award? The new survey is going to be more rigorous. Uh, the new survey is in line, bringing us into line. There's a lot of things have happened in the last eight years. So the survey is going to bring into line with some of the national things like the net zero, the route map to net zero from the Church of England. So the buildings part, for example, is really going to reflect the, uh, the route map. So there'll be some similarities. We don't want it necessarily to be harder. We don't want to get less churches getting their awards, um, but it is going to be more rigorous. But I hope that, hope that will answer <laughs> that question. Um, so there we are, there's a sliding scale and you'll see as you go through where, where, what you might need to do to, to get to the next level of award. Um, so I hope that helps there with that, that, just that snapshot of what the survey looks like. We've had a few numbers already, but we are sitting here in the Diocese of Norwich. Um, a few numbers, some of these numbers might be up a few than, the, than what I've got on the slide. There are about 650 churches in this beautiful diocese, and you already have 27% of those registered with Eco Church. That's brilliant. Definitely, Barbara and I would love to see that move up over the coming year or so. You already have 66 bronze churches and 21 silver churches. And we had a show of hands earlier about who's read, who has an award. If you're a silver church, I am so pleased that you are. Please tell other people what you're doing. You know, you have experience, you have information that is really valuable to share. So that's a great thing. And there's a silver awarded cathedral as well. So these are great things in your area. What does that look like on the map? This is a map. You can look at this map on the Eco Church website and you can look at Norwich Diocese and these are the little uh, churches that come up. You can look at the ones that are also registered. You'll be looking at that, looking at where you are. Oh, I didn't know there was any near me. Or maybe you're looking at that map and thinking, there are no churches near me. But uh, it, it's a useful thing when you are, you are investigating or when you are thinking, how do I move forward? Have a look at the map, see who are your neighbours, because working together is going to be key to moving forward with Eco Church. But I just highlight that Eco Church is not just the Church of England. So the next map, I'm going to show you, see if you can spot the difference. Are all the eco churches in this region? There are more of them and there are other denominations. And you will notice down at the bottom, there are two gold churches. So they are Emmanuel Church Bungay and All Saints Church Mendham. Those are really great resources in your community, and I'm really delighted to know that Barbara's already collaborating with them for future events because they have experience as well that's going to be relevant to you and nearish neighbours for you to for draw upon. I've already mentioned the new survey is coming soon. If you haven't signed up to uh, Eco Church or to any of our communications, please do that. There are some leaflets um, on the table and there's a, a, a white leaflet with some, it's just, just plain printing. You can fill that in and give it to me or just sign up online so that you receive Eco Church Connect. That's our regular email and we'll update you and you'll be first to know about the new survey when it goes live. I'm next gonna take you through my five top tips. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you the question, how do you work best? It's exam season in my house. I very much, uh, my sympathy is with Kitty. Well, congratulations if she's just finished her exams. Uh, we're still not quite finished yet in my household. We've got um, A-levels and GCSEs happening. And everyone revises differently. You might be writing flashcards, you might be making mind maps, having study groups or pacing around walking or just telling the goat what you have learned. So my question to you is how do you work best? Do you like to plan, look at a map of the year or look at a, a, a calendar for the year and think through sequentially? Do you like to gather all the information, do lots of research online, look at websites? Or do you like to just have a go? Let's, let's try this out. I want you to think what's going to be the most useful way to go forward 
from today within your church setting? How are you going to involve your church family? How can you take forward your action plan from today? And do you want a goat to talk to about it? So these are my five top tips for moving forward with Eco Church. Engaging with the seasons, don't reinvent the wheel, use what you've got, support and share. Engage with the seasons. A planner can be a really good way of thinking through your church year. There's a lovely uh, planner on the Church of England website, that's the picture on the right, with different environmental days throughout the year. And it can be good to hang on to those as, as things that you might hold events around. Of course, you've got the church calendar of Advent and Lent, harvest, festivals, times that it can be really easy to in bring in creation care into those things. Or there might be local events in your community, fairs or fates or festivals, that would be a good way of you using those times to look specifically at creation care or action in your community, such as Earth Day or Great Big Green Week, which we're just coming to the end of right now, or Water Day. But we also need to respond to the, the seasons that we're in more broadly than that. And when COVID struck, that was a whole new season we found ourselves in. And that picture there of the stone is how one church adapted to that particular season when it was very hard to then go out and do your Easter sunrise service on a hill. And in that time of despair and real challenge nationally, the church delivered stones to the church members and they at home painted, painted stones with messages, words of hope or inspiration or Bible verses, and then out on their walk, put them around the community for people to collect, pick up, take home or give to someone else. And it just created this real online uh, community energy about what was going on. But it was also a way of just uh, reaching into the community at what was a really challenging time. So we just need to think creatively about how we engage with the season. We're currently in a season of election. Maybe that's the opportunity for you to engage with your community. And then there's, of course, the actual seasons we're in as well. Great opportunities to think about connecting to food. This is a church who has a plant swap outside their church during times when they've got too many seedlings. There's a lovely strawberry plants here. And encouraging church members to have a go at growing, maybe exchanging pollinator-friendly plants as seedlings that might just be on the doorstep or placed in the community. But a simple plant swap could also be time for more information to be shared. It could be a time for encouraging contemplation of God's creation. So it's a, it's a chance for you to just open that conversation. My next tip is don't reinvent the wheel. If you don't know where to start, please start with some of these great resources. You do not have to create material, uh, study packs, information, because so much is out there to help you. These are just a few different organizations, charities, projects that you might want to tap into as you're tackling different elements of Eco Church, or you feel that you're really led to explore a particular topic. There are organizations here, Just Money Movement, about ethical finance, engaging in that as a church, thinking about individuals and their money and finance. Opportunities to think about nature, Churches Count on Nature, is a week-long project in encouraging you to engage in citizen science. We've heard about the value of knowing what's in your churchyards. This is a great time to do it. Evaluate what's there, feed that international data, but also understand what's going on in your immediate churchyard. Theology and different ways of thinking about things. We've got Green Christian is one of the, the organizations that got lots of uh, opportunities for learning and thinking about issues and other 
other organisations have also been mentioned today. Great Big Green Week. It's a national initiative, but it's a great way for churches to use that to engage in creation care. There's a church uh, this year, the, the theme for Great Big Green Week is swaps. So there's a tot toddler group who decides to have a toy swap. Come along, bring your toys. You don't have to buy everything new. You can swap out something. You can re-gift something and give your kids an opportunity to play with something different. It's a very simple idea, but it's about tapping into the resources that are already out there to progress this within your church. There's lots of small groups, resources and materials. I'm just mentioning one here, which is called the Big Church Read. There's lots of different Bible study groups, but this is about a, reading a book together. There are videos, there are online questions that you can look, of, look up. They have about five or six of the books that they, they list. They have over 20 books on the Big Church Read, but some of them are specific to justice, ethical living, Christian, environmental issues. So that's another resource. Just going to mention this other final project. Again, it's about thinking about what you might use as a resource. So this is an example of a project to engage with something called the Loving Earth Project. This is a Quaker originated project just before COVID, where they encourage people to respond to their environment through textiles. So people were encouraged to think about a place they love, how that's being affected by nature degradation or by climate change and then to respond by each individual creating a 12 inch panel of textiles and then a reflection. You can borrow that exhibition and put it in your church or your local community or you might want to do that as part of your a group in your your church. Having conversations about climate and carbon and nature can feel like a disconnect for some people in our churches. But I imagine there's quite a lot of your church members who might like craft and sewing and sitting together. So this might be a resource for you. Again, there are so many things out there for you to tap into uh, and make use of as you go through this journey together. Next, use what you've got. You've got buildings, you have gardens, churchyards rather, green spaces. You probably have links with schools or maybe cubs or scout groups. You may already have links or have on your doorstep nature reserves, conservation projects. You may have know-how. You may have experts in your church. Last week for Great Big Green Week, I visited a church um, just very nearby to me, and they put on a talk about sustainable flowers. And I thought, this is amazing. Turns out in their congregation, just down the road, they have this national expert who has spent the last 20 years researching the sustainability of flowers, how they're grown, how they're shipped, pesticides, uh, workers' rights, everything you could think of. And it's relevant to churches, and then people bring those flowers into churches and they put them into a, an oasis that never biodegrades or a floor, you know, floral foam. She could talk to this about this in our local community during Great Big Green Week. What an amazing resource. And I've already spoken to people here who are, tell me they're ecologists, tell me they're other things. Great, you have got the know-how, and I am sure there's more know-how in your, in your community. So make use of what you've got. I mentioned before an outdoor service. This is a really easy way to start by engaging with your environment. But worship outdoors is not just a service outside. It is engaging with the environment. It's about praying under the sky. It is a chance to notice. It's about reciprocity. It's about giving thanks for the flowers and the scent of flowers which attracts bees. It's about giving thanks for those tiny creatures that pollinate the plants to produce the food that we love. It's about thinking through the interconnectedness of nature and creation. I don't know if you watch Spring Watch, but I absolutely love seeing how excited those presenters get about nature. And you're just sitting there and the nature's amazing, but they're getting just so animated about what they're seeing. It's just fantastic. The more we know, the more we notice. 
And if we can impart some of that, if we can learn together about what is around us, we are going to be so much more appreciative to our creator God about what's on our doorstep. Support is the next area. Today is an enormously good start uh, to, to support. I am sure there have been connections made today that you're going to be taking forwards. Use the resources on the Church of England website, the diocese website, the Eco Church website. Use your DEO. Use uh, other people who are, have spoken today as your support. And don't forget that map to see who's, who's your neighbor. Share and celebrate. This is such a crucial part of the Eco Church process. Spread the word signage, information about what you're doing, why you're doing it. Share that information in your newsletters, put that information on your website, use your social media, articles in local magazines, and celebrate achievements. It was really great today. I heard there was a photo opportunity outside for a church who got their silver Eco Church Award. Share that, tell people what's going on. Sh sharing information like this is an encouragement to your church family, as well as a motivation to continue. And it's about building this understanding of why and those turning points and those continued aha moments. Leaving your church yard unmown can be good. We've heard about how it might help, but let's communicate that. Information boards. If people understand that some long grass is a habitat for pollinators, also for the, the, the insects that then are part of a food chain that feed the birds, they can see the bigger picture and the value of what you're doing. As I said, the more we know about God's earth, the more we appreciate it. If you twin your bin, as this church in Glossop in Derbyshire have done, tell people about why you've done it. Sharing is necessary to tell others when, what you've learned and, and what works. It's about finding solutions to challenges. So if you learn where to recycle printer cartridges or blister packs, please tell your congregation. So those were my top tips to take away from today. Where do we go from here? This is, again, this church in Glossop, actually, he, this chap, this, the vicar here is building a dead hedge, which we had referenced earlier, fabulous habitat for hedgehogs. And also, they can look quite nice. Doesn't sound like it's appealing, but they can really look like great structural features in your churchyard. Where do I go from here? I want you to think back to the numbers I asked you to, to put yourself on that scale at the beginning from naught to 10. Where, where were you? Were you a three? How can you get to four? Maybe you were a five. How can you get to six? What do you need to do next? Do you need to register? with Eco Church. Maybe you need to start the survey or revisit the survey. Maybe you need to form a group within your church or maybe with neighboring churches. Maybe it's about creating a plan. Perhaps it's thinking about how you could use a small group study or an upcoming season or festival. Maybe it's about how you might collaborate with a nearby nature reserve or a school Maybe you want to research some resources that have been mentioned today. Maybe you want to know what church's count on nature is. Or maybe you want to know what a halo heater is. Or maybe today, to get to that next level, you need to celebrate and share. So jot that action down, take it away, and make it happen. We know that climate change is impacting those who have contributed least to the problem. We know that the loss of biodiversity is staggering. We know that our engagement in these issues is critical. I saw this swan on a recent walk along a towpath, just a, a few feet from the path. This swan, she's been returning to this nest for the last seven years and nurturing her young, despite living very close to people, despite that nest containing bits of shopping trolley, plastic bags, and an old shoe, 
She is nurturing new life despite us. So what can we do to support life, human and non-human, in the world around us? Eco Church can start as a special service at harvest or a Bible study during Lent, but it can lead to weekly intercessory prayers about lament and praise for God's earth and the people and creatures who inhabit it. Eco Church can start with toilet twinning, but it can lead to the congregation thinking about water use and installing water butts and campaigning to stop sewage and pollution of our rivers and seas. Eco Church can start with recycled printer paper, but it can lead to a deep understanding of the interconnectedness between us as created beings and the resources that God provides. Thank you for listening.